So we've learned how to move sprites with the keyboard. We've learned how to make sprite image sequences. And we've studied how to do rectangle intersections. So now we're going to bring all of that together and pick up in the keyboard project where we left off and we'll be adding the images to it. Now if I look in my project folder I will see I have an assets folder and then in the assets folder I have my skeletons and I have my unicorns. So these are going to be the files that we will be bringing into this project. So I'm just going to position this so that I can see what I'm doing as I want to bring these images in. So the same as every other project, when we are bringing images into our project, what we want to do is load them in the setup. Because once they're loaded in the setup, then our individual classes, our enemy and player, will have access to them. So the first thing we need to do is to load these images into the project. And to do that, we will need an array to hold a reference to them. So it's an image array, so we're going to put all of the images and the references into an array. Now it's important if you look at it, you'll notice how they are numbered. So we have a numerical sequence in the naming of these, and that's going to be uh, something we have to work with here. So I will have an array of player images, and I will have an array of enemy images. Now we need to populate them. So we want to populate them before we build our instances of our player and enemy, because if we don't have these loaded into memory, when player or enemy tries to access the image files, they'll say, hey, what are those? Where are those? I don't know. And it will throw an error message. So order of operation does matter in coding. Um, instructions are executed in line order. So in this case, we'll load the images so then player can access them. We'll load the images for enemy, then the enemy can access them. So new. And I need to say how many are going to be in this. Now, I also want to, um, I need two more variables here I'll be working with. And these will be int. And this will be player frames and enemy frames. So this will be my player frames, which currently we haven't defined yet, so we do need to give that a value. Well, we defined it, but it would have a value of zero because we didn't give it a value. And if I look here in that folder, I will see that there are four I'm going to set the skeleton up as the player, so then that means there are 12 images there. And my, oh, not images, frames, and I forgot an equal sign. And then enemy frames. And in this case, there are 16. We start counting at zero, and it goes all the way up to 15. Started at zero, went to 11 for the player, so there are 16. So once we have populated that, now we are going to fill this array with loading each one of these images. The easiest way to do that will be to use a loop. So we use a for loop. So we start out int i is equal to 0. i is going to be less than player frames and then I plus plus. A couple curly braces, up arrow back into it. So this is the same kind of loop that we would use in say the catcher game when we're cycling through all the drops and we're working with that where we have an array of elements that we're creating but in this case we are just loading images. So this is going to be I is going to be equal to load image 
And the image that we are going to be loading will be in our assets folder. And then the player will be the skeleton. And I will choose NESW for that. Oh, and I also uh, need to then put in the name. So that gives me the folder of assets, the folder that the skeleton's in. Then I need to populate the name. And this is where we have to use some uh, new things that we haven't learned yet. So it's skeleton red eye. And now I'm not going to put the zero zero because we want to populate it. And we can do that uh, by simply attaching into it I. But I in this case, it'll be zero, one, two, three. But I want it to say zero, 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 one, zero, two, and then all the way through 11. Well, what we're in fact trying to do there is we're trying to format a number. And we can do that by using NF. And then we use what number we're trying to format and then how many numbers we want it to be. So when we format the number and say two, that means if I take a zero and format it to be two places, it will be zero, zero. If I take one and format it to be two places, it will be zero, one. If I take 11 and format it, it will be 11. 10 would be 10. Nine is zero, nine. So it allows it to match what is in the code. Now if we had, this would work if we go up to 99 images, but sometimes our graphics programs, when they create these sprite sequences, it might do four zeros. So it would be zero, 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 one. So then our NF instead of being two would be four, but we're only needing two. And now if I look at the file name, there's also a dot PNG at the end of it. So we have to put all of that in there while we load that image file. And I'll just extend this out so we can see the whole thing. So now we can see it loads that image into our player images. Right now, uh, we are not going to worry about the enemy images. We're just going to load the player images and get that working. And then we can repeat the process with the enemy images. So the first step is to load the player, get it working, because there's no point in putting a bunch of code in for one and finding that we need to change it for the other one. So let's get one working first. Now I can run my program and let's see, and no error messages, so that's good, but it, we really haven't done anything different yet. We need to now populate that uh, in our player. So when we go into player, we're going to end up needing a couple more variables that we will be keeping track of while we are uh, working here. So the extra variables that we're going to need, we'll be adding them as we go. But the first one I will need to keep track of what is my current frame. So we'll start with that. And then we're going to add them as we go. So now if I go into display here, we'll just go to the end of it. And I'll use my image command. And then I'll grab my player images and we'll put in current frame and then we will draw it at X and Y. Now we didn't give current frame a value yet, so let's start that out. And we'll start out current frame at zero. Now let's run this and see what we get. And we'll see, there it is. Now it's not animating yet. We are looking at frame zero. So if I look here on the skeleton, that is frame zero. So indeed, our code is working, so that's good. But we want that to be able to update as we go. So to update this, what we want to do is we want to tell current frame to increase. So there's two ways we can write this. One is I can say current frame plus plus if frame is equal to player frames, the total number that we have at that point 
current frame will be now set back equal to zero. Let's run this and see what we get. And we'll see we are cycling through all of our frames. So that's not quite what we want. And because each one of these directions is comprised of three frames, then I'm going to store that. And I will call it loop frames. And our frames will be three. Now, for the unicorn, it would be four. But in this case, it's three. So now let's change this and go loop frames. Now let's run it and see what we get. Now we can see he's walking really fast uphill. So this is now giving us what we want. But what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to kind of offset which group of frames we're looking at. So I'm going to make a value and call that offset. And I'll set my offset equal to zero to begin with. And then we can use that here when we reference in display plus offset. Now, if we think about it, when should we change offset? Well, it would make sense to change that when we change left, right, up, or down. So we can do that here, offset. And our offset, if we look through here, so we start out, so zero for up, right will be three, down will be six, and left will be nine. So left offset equals nine. Now let's go right, offset is equal to three. And now up, offset will be equal to zero and down offset is going to be equal to six. Oh, and not offset, offset. Let's run that again and see what we get. So now we can see it's working. We're getting our four directions, but he's going really fast. And if we remember the discussion when we were creating the sprites, if we don't have enough frames in the animation because we're playing our animation so fast, it's going to create this kind of almost manic strobing effect. But there's some easy ways that we can modify this without having to go through and add in a bunch of extra artwork, load duplicate images, and what we can do is we can put a delay into the process. So this, it's going to look very much like what we're doing with current frame that we will put this delay in. So we want to slow down the process here of representing it. I also want to show a different way that we can do this exact same code. So what I can say instead of current frame with an if statement, we can do current frame is going to be equal to current frame plus one and we use the modulo operator, the modulus math operation, and then we are going to divide it by loop frames. So what this does is current frame starts out at zero, and then we say current frame plus one, which would now be one, divided by the number of loop frames, which is three, would be zero, remainder of one. Well, the first time it's zero when we go through. Then as current frame gets bigger, zero plus one is one divided by three would be three goes into one zero times remainder of one. Then we get to repeat it again where then current frame was one. We add one more to it. Two. Two divided by three is going to be zero remainder of two. 3 divided by 3 is going to be 1, remainder of 0. 4 divided by 3 is going to be 1, remainder 2. 5 divided by 3. So you can see this process of 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 as we cycle through this. So this allows us to do this four lines of code in a single line. 
both work. Now we don't want to do it twice because that will create, you know, then we'll be updating twice every loop. So what we want though is we don't want to update current frame every draw cycle. Instead we want to slow it down and we can do that by creating a delay. So I'm going to add one more variable. So we added current frame, loop frames offset to now finally delay. Now the delay is going to be equal to 5. We remember back in Pascal, our, he was showing us the animation at 12 frames per second. Our sketch is playing at 60 frames per second, so 60 divided by 12 gives us 5. So that's a good starting number to work with on this. So then we can slow this down as we work with it, and hopefully this is going to give us a little better result. So what we can do is say if delay is equal to zero then we're going to update current frame. Oh, got to spell delay right. And then I can say delay it's equal to delay plus one and then divided by, oh, delay is zero. This is where I wanted the five, my bad. Delay is zero to start out with. But five, this is where we'll change it. Now if we find that this is too slow, we go to four. If we find it's too fast, go to six or seven or whatever we want it to be. So this now cycles through delay, so delay will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So effectively every fifth time through, we're going to update our animation. So now if we run it, we'll see he's walking at better pace. Now you have to adjust the speed that you animate your, or allow it, your kind of your VX or VY, how quickly it moves across the screen, you have to, or speed X, speed Y, you have to temper that number with how quickly it's animating for things to feel and look correct. So this now allows us to do it, but if you notice, when we're not walking, we're still walking. So even when we're not moving, we're walking. So we, we want to change that a little bit. And the way to go about doing that would be to look at when are we not pressing any keys. So when up, down, left, and right are all false, meaning no keys are being pressed, or at least no movement keys, then we don't want current frame to keep updating. So we can accomplish that by saying if not up and not down well, I missed um, down and not left and not right. So when all four of those things are true, we want our current frame to be equal to one. And I chose one for a very specific reason. And we will look at that in just a moment here as to why. But then I'm going to take all of this code right here as we're working it with um, the delay and everything else. So cut that out of there, paste it in here, just take care of the formatting. It's looking good. I probably, you know, it'd be nice if I put some comments in here, such as and update so it's easier to see and oh, comment comment and no keys so if they're not being pressed current frame is one otherwise we increase our delay cycle through our delay and update the frame now I chose one because if we look here frame zero he's walking so frame one is like the neutral position for each movement sequence. So we can see how it corresponds. See there would be frame one and then frame four 
is if we those seem more like steps so we can figure out which one or frame five so we'll set all of those as we work our way through here but first let's see if this is working it's not walking okay good Now we can realize each one of those middle frames, because it's one, so a current frame is one plus whatever the offset, so that lens is at the middle one of each one of the movement cycles. So now when I stop moving, it goes. Now if you wanted instead to set it so that whenever you're not walking, the character is just facing forward, then you could also reset the off offset. So current frame would be one and we could set the offset equal to, uh, I think it was, what is down, six? Yeah, so offset is six. So if you did that, every time you stop moving, it'd be facing forward. Now you could also, instead of stopping the animation, if you had a standing animation, so an idle animation, then you could be telling that to play instead. So that would be you know, one more thing you could work into this. We just chose not to do that on this particular project. So with this, we're in pretty good shape. The player is now animating. I can walk in my four directions. When I stop, the player stops animating. So think we're in good shape but if you notice the red square is what we've set for the height and width so we probably do need to adjust the size of that a little bit and if we go up into height and width well the width here was 44 and, er, and the height was 64 so now let's run it and see what it looks like now we can see there is the box that was set for the player as they're moving. So the next step will be to repeat this process but with the frames for the unicorn. So with the player working it's time to repeat the process for the enemy. So before we add code into the enemy class let's go back into our main code and see Enemy frames, player images, all right. So all of this now needs to repeat, but for the unicorn. And let's just open back up our folder and we can see, so it's gonna be assets, unicorn, and we can see the naming structure that happens with that. So to continue the process, now at this point it will be enemy frames is going to be equal to new image and this enemy frames. So that now populates our array, our array. Um, oh, enemy frames can't be equal to that, it's enemy images. Starting to think I need to rethink the names because I've messed those up a few times. And we'll use a for loop to cycle through it again. This time though I'm going to use a different iterator. Instead of I, I will use J. And uh, it's going to be the same code otherwise, except we use enemy instead of player. and then swap out the I's for J's. Then load image, assets, unicorn, unicorn, and then this time we do number format once more. It'd be J comma two, because again we have two numerical characters in that file name structure and then add in the .png. So that now populates our enemy images into it and we can go into the enemy's display right here and we can even show it. Image. Enemy images and then we'll just do zero for now 
and then draw it at X and Y and run the sketch and let's see and now we can see indeed it's working for us that we have that enemy image happening right there. Also going to just go ahead right now and change my background color. I just want to make it a little more gray than the unicorn. Oh, and we can see the chasing still works, but we're gonna have to do something a little bit different. But first, let's get that uh, unicorn animating and then we will figure out what's going on with it. Because where the player uses an offset based on what key is being pressed, when we look at the enemy, when the enemy is chasing, it's figuring out which direction it's going. So at this point where you need to set that offset, which will determine which way it's facing so that we're able to work with it. So just by coincidence, I happen to put all those on one line to make copy pasting easy. So I'll copy current frame, loop frames, offset, and delay. I'll go stick that into our enemy right here. So now we have all of those and I will borrow the code from there as well. Those don't fit on one line because they all have to be done separately. Now this time the loop frames instead of three are four because our animated loops are four with it. We'll start offset at zero. So we can even in our display current frame plus offset so and if we run it no error messages and it still is the same image so that's good now it's time to animate it now if we go back into the player we'll see we have this kind of animated method where if I'm chasing I update if I'm not chasing I don't so it's really going to be but instead of up down left or right under the enemy here that we just need to, so at this point, it's right in here under chase. If I'm chasing, or if I'm not chasing, so this is where when I'm not chasing, I do that. And otherwise, we're going to then do the chase, and then this is where we set those options into it. So the first option we'll be wanting to set on here will be our current frame. So then we get to choose which frame it's going to be based on what direction we're doing. So it's the same as working with the player. So when we're not pressing any keys, we set current frame equal to one. So if I'm not chasing, current frame is going to be equal to one. But if I am chasing, then we are going to run through our delay and our loop frame. So let's copy that. And now we can just put this down here. So as we do this, just put a comment and not chasing. Start chasing. So this now loops, and then as this figures out which direction we're going, so as we look at this, I don't know why that one ended up commented. So if y, it, if we're doing y moves, that means we're going to be moving up or down. So when vy is a positive value, that means we are moving down. So then this means Offset is going to be equal to, and this is where we have to figure out which frames are which. So we start out, left is zero, and then right is going to be four, and eight will be up, and down should be 12, because we go up, down. Okay, so looking at that, so this means we are, 
our our y is less than the player's y, so we're going down. So that means my offset is going to be 12. If I'm going up, offset is going to be equal to 8. And if I have a positive vx, so that means I'm moving to the right. So that means offset is going to be equal to 4. And if I'm going left, offset is going to be equal to 0. So that now gives us our offsets. So then it can animate when we are close. Uh, looks like Uh, I, I went backwards on my up and downs. Whoops. Oh, it happens. Easy enough. So, oh, because x is, so we're going to the right, and that was 0, and when we're going to the left, so I went with pointing, yeah, uh, 4. Now let's try and run this again. Okay, so now we can see it's chasing us. Chasing us, chasing now at the 45, it's a little bit awkward when it does that, when it's trying to close that, but otherwise it seems to be working pretty good. So we're making good progress on that. It does seem that this one, because there's more frames, probably don't need the delay of five. Let's switch that down to a three and see. And now that, that just feels a little snappier as part of it. So I like how that's starting to move. Now we can see that I have not corrected for the width and height. Now the graphics technically were 64 by 64. So then that is the box that contains it, especially when it's going horizontal. When we're going vertical, that hit area is not as accurate and we may need to take that into account. So that is something to keep in mind as we flesh this out. Now you can get rid of these kind of um, what we could almost call our collision boxes in that circle so we just see things moving around on the screen and then that makes it seem even a little bit more lively. If I want that chasing area to be bigger so that it starts going from a you know different distance. I can change that, maybe go 300. So it's a little harder to get away. Now my circle's not reflecting that on my player, so if I'm changing that to 300 when I draw that circle here. Oh. So we can see that is now the circle we're working with. So radius of 300, where the circle I drew has a diameter of 600. All right, so got some chasing going on. We got some magic happening. If we don't want to see those boxes, of course, you just hide that and hide that and now and now this is using you know so we're using circle based collision still we haven't uh, made anything happen with the rectangle based collision and that's what we will start working on next